Hi, and welcome back. Today, I'd like to dive into a common ingredient in synthesis, sample and hold. I'll quickly explain how the sample and hold function works, and then we'll dive into a series of patches, starting with some basic ideas and getting more creative along the way. If you like to support this video series, or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. And of course, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos about modular synthesis from me. But now, let's dive right in. So let's start at the beginning. What is sample and hold, and how does it work? A sample and hold signal is often associated with a randomly generated step random voltage that can be found in many synthesizers. However, sample and hold isn't a signal, but rather a function. And within a modular system, that function can be used in more creative ways. A sample and hold module requires two signals to work. First off, a signal to sample. This is the signal the output signal is based on. So its range, shape and frequency all influence the outcome. Let's take a simple sine wave as an example. Second, you need a trigger or gate signal. Every time you send the sample and hold module a trigger, it will check the current value of the sample signal and hold that value at the output, until it receives a new trigger. The beauty of a modular sample and hold module is that you can feed it anything you like. If you replace the slow sine wave with noise for example, which is basically a very fast random voltage, and send the module a steady clocked trigger, we get the classic step random voltage. But we can also use slower random voltages, looping envelopes, gates, a 1V per octave signal, and so on. Beside that, we can also get creative with the trigger input and feed it other signals than a steady clock. In this video, I'll be using the Dupfa A148, which is a simple but compact dual sample and hold module. Both upper and lower sections are identical, each with a sample input, a trigger input, and one output. You can use a simple jumper on the back of the module to set the function for that section to be either sample and hold or track and hold. In this video, I'll just be using the sample and hold function. I'll come back to the track and hold and some ideas for that in another video soon. So let's get creative with this and look at some interesting ways to patch it up. If you take a sample and hold module, feed it noise and use a clock to trigger it, you have a classic step random voltage you can use to modulate parameters. Let's quickly take it to the pitch of an oscillator, so you can clearly hear the signal. That's a pretty unusable sound if you ask me, but in most cases, just using an attenuator to reduce the amount of influence is enough to make it work. If you make a more comprehensive voice with another oscillator, a mixer, wave folder, filter and a VCA, and you use the attenuated sample and hold signal on one of the oscillators, you can create a more musically interesting effect. In the same setup, you can experiment with pretty much every possible destination. Beside oscillator frequency, try things like the wave folder or filter. And if you add a sequencer with a voltage controlled envelope, you can also control the attack or decay time with the step random voltage to create very dynamic sequences. The nice thing here is that the signal is random, but steady between triggers from the clock. So there is no modulation going on during each note. If you manually play the voice, for example with the BeatStep Pro, you can use its gate out to trigger the input of the sample and hold module. Now, every time you play a note, the sampled value is steady until you play another note. Another way to create interesting dynamics is to use the random sample and hold signal on a VCA, and use that VCA to control the amount of modulation from one module to another. For example, the amount of frequency modulation between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, or the amount of LFO influencing the filter. In that case, you can also multiply the sample and hold signal to control the speed of the LFO as well. Uh, 
The amount of destinations for a random sample and hold signal is pretty much endless. But like I said at the beginning, it doesn't have to be a random signal. If you use noise as the input signal with a steady clock, we get step random. But we can feed the sample and hold anything we like. LFOs can be fun as well. If we take a simple ramp shape for example, we create a rising staircase. A triangle wave will create a step signal going up and down. And a sine wave looks similar but with more steps lingering in the high and low regions. If we have a look at the staircase signal and expand it over a few cycles, you can see the signal isn't looping exactly if the clock and tempo of the LFO are not exactly matched. This can be a really nice effect. For example, if we use this signal to modulate a filter in a voice with a simple three-step melody. However, if you do want the pattern to repeat itself, you can send the same clock you use to trigger the sample and hold to a clock divider and have a division of the clock re-trigger the LFO. This way, the clock and LFO shape are exactly in sync and you will create a looping sample and hold pattern. This can be fun and you can make the pattern as complex as you like. For example, you can use a few different divisions to re-trigger an LFO and gate two envelopes. Then you can use a mixer to mix these signals together and then feed it to the sample and hold. Depending on what divisions you use, you can create longer looping patterns. Here, the sample and hold signal is used on a simple voice and sent to both the filter as well as the delay time to create a more industrial rhythmical patch. By mixing in the different signals by hand, you can mix in different looping patterns. Since there's already a mixer in this patch, it's easy to create any combination of tempo synced and free running sources. For example, mix a tempo synced rising envelope with a slow free running sine wave to create a little rising staircase that waves up and down. Or mix a large amount of a slower sine wave LFO with a bit of noise. This way you have a signal that slowly goes up and down but still has clocked random variations. The mixing possibilities are endless. Beside creating variations by feeding a sample and hold different sample inputs, you can get creative with the trigger input as well. Let's feed the sample and hold a noise signal again to create a random step voltage. Now you can increase the randomness of the signal by not using a steady clock, but instead use an unsynced random trigger signal. This way you get random voltages generated at random moments. You can clearly hear the result of that if you feed it to the filter in a steady baseline for example. You can mess around with the trigger input signal to create different patterns. For example, you can use a simple square wave LFO, but send the LFO a smooth random voltage to make its speed drift over time. Or you can use a combination of a clock, divider and logic modules to create tempo synced but interesting changing patterns. Or of course, use a simple trigger sequencer to create a custom pattern. These kind of signals can be very useful if you're into drone or self-generative patches. If you'd like to learn more about that, have a look at these introduction videos I made. You can use a sample and hold as a random gate or trigger generator. If you create the classic clocked random signal for example, and use it to gate or trigger another module, like a hi-hat, it will work whenever your signal passes the threshold of that module. You can use an attenuator or offset voltage to change the amount of signal passing the threshold. And, of course, Depending on if you use a clock to trigger the sample and hold module or not, you can create either tempo synced or free running triggers. Another simple way to create interesting percussive triggers is to feed an unsynced square wave into the sample input and the fast clock to the trigger input of the sample and hold module. With the frequency of the LFO, you can create interesting patterns. And if you want, you can create looping patterns by using a clock divider and re-trigger the LFO every few bars.
A nice trick with an analog sample on hold is to use it as a rudimentary sample rate reducer. If you feed an audio signal into the sample input, the trigger input will determine the sample rate. If you want to get audible results out of this, you need to feed a high audio rate trigger signal into the trigger input. And then you can slow it down to reduce the sample rate. If you like to learn more about smooth random voltages, have a look at this video. And if you'd like to see more modular content from me, smash that like, subscribe and bell button. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.